Hey guys, it's Scott Clark with Scooter Media, and I just wanted to wish you a happy new year and welcome you to 2023. In today's video, I'm going to show you some lens options that I've been using to shoot video for the Canon R7 and R10. Let's get into it. The R7 and R10 were released in June of 2022, and at the time of their release, there were only two native APS-C format lenses announced. The RFS 18-45mm and the RFS 18-150mm. Here we are now in January of 2023, six months later, and there are still only those two native lenses available. I purchased the Canon R7 with the 18 to 150 millimeter lens at the time of its release and have been using it constantly since then. However, there are some other great lens options and focal lengths that can be used, and I'm gonna show you those today. Before we jump into the different lenses, I just wanted to mention that there will be some EF and EFS lenses on the list that you will need to mount to the R7 and R10 using an EF to R adapter. And this adapter can be purchased for $130 Canadian and allows you to mount any EF or EFS lens to any R mount camera with full functionality. There is also a Canon EF to R adapter with a built-in variable ND filter, which I'd highly recommend to any filmmakers using EF or EFS lenses on any of the R mount cameras, as it's essentially like having built-in NDs and works fantastic. I have done a full review on this and I will leave a link in the description. Okay, let's get into the lenses, and I am going to do these in the order of lowest price to highest price. The first lens we're going to look at is the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 lens. And the version that I have here is a slightly older model, and this lens is commonly referred to as the Nifty 50. There are many newer versions of this lens, including the RF 50mm f1.8 STM lens, and this is the only lens on this list that is full frame that I'm going to show you. One thing to keep in mind when mounting a full frame lens on a crop sensor camera is that the camera crops in on the image, so in this instance the 50mm becomes approximately 75mm, as shown here. As I mentioned earlier, because I am using an older EF lens, I do need to use the EF to R adapter to mount it on the Canon R7. However, if you do purchase the new RF 50mm f1.8 STM lens, you do not need to use the adapter. Now with that being said, the reason I left this one on the list is that I think this lens is probably the best bang for the buck that you can get. It may not have the best build quality, but it is so small and super lightweight and it's really easy to just throw in your camera bag. The fast f.18 aperture on this lens is going to give you those nice blurry backgrounds and is really going to make the image pop. And this is also a nice focal range for interviews as well. The image quality for the price is where this lens really stands out with the new RF 50mm version going for $199.99 Canadian. However, you can get older versions used like the one I'm still using here for less than $100. The second lens on our list is the Canon EFS 10 to 18 mm f4.5 to 5.6 image stabilized STM lens. And this is an ultra wide angle lens for Canon APS-C cameras. This lens is great for getting those ultra wide angles as you can see here at 10 mm and then when zoomed into 18 mm it's still very wide. This lens is great for getting beautiful landscape shots as well as handheld shots due to it having image stabilization built in. Again, the build quality isn't the greatest on this lens, and with the higher f4.5 to 5.6 aperture, you're not going to get those same blurry backgrounds, but with this being a wide-angle lens, it's not quite as necessary. This lens sells new for $369.99, but you can find it used on the used gear sites for around $200. The next lens on the list is the Sigma 30mm f1.4 DC HSM art lens. I just did a review of this lens in my last video as I'd had a lot of questions about it and I will leave a link in the description below to check that out. This lens is built like a tank and with the f1.4 aperture this is going to be the bokeh or blurry background king of all the lenses on this list. The image quality out of this lens is beautiful and sharp even when shot wide open at f1.4 and the 30mm focal range is very useful. The cheapest I could find this lens new was $550, but you can find it for around $250 to $300 used, and this lens would be a great addition to the Canon R7 or R10. The 
The next lens on the list is the Canon RFS 18-150mm f3.5-6.3 to image stabilized STM lens. This is the kit lens that did come with the Canon R7 and if you happen to see my review of this lens, you'll know when I first got it I wasn't too happy that I had to get the camera with the lens. However, I have been thoroughly impressed and surprised with this lens and I will leave a link to that video as well. The RFS 18-150mm to is so small and lightweight, it's just great to just throw on the camera and use as an everyday lens, and the focal range from 18mm to 150mm is fantastic. I was also surprised with the image quality and sharpness from this lens at both the wide and close end. And while you can achieve the blurry backgrounds with this lens, I do wish it did have a lower aperture. This lens sells new for $649.99 and it is already starting to pop up on the used websites for about half that. The last lens on our list is the Sigma 18-35mm f1.8 DC HSM art lens and this is the lens that I would recommend to anyone using the R7 or R10 for video. This is what we are using to shoot this video right now and this lens basically stays on my R7 at all times. This is the most expensive lens on the list but you get what you pay for and the image quality out of this lens is stunning. Even wide open at f1.8, the image is sharp and beautiful with bright vivid colors and that nice blurry background. I will mention that this lens is built like a tank and is very heavy, and when you do add in the Canon adapter, it does make it a little front heavy, but I do think it's worth it for the image. The 18 to 35 millimeter focal range may not seem like enough of a range for some, but I found it very useful in all the scenarios that I've used it for. This lens does not feature image stabilization, but in my opinion is one of the best APS-C format lenses ever made. This lens sells new for $879.99 and can be found used for around $700. I have done an in-depth review on this lens as well and will leave a link in the description below. That's it for the lenses on my list. Hopefully Canon will announce some new RFS lenses in the beginning of this year. And if you have any other suggestions or are using any other lenses, let me know in the comments. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing as it really does make a difference, and I would love to have you join me on this YouTube journey. Also hit that notification bell to stay up to date with everything on this channel. I mentioned earlier that I reviewed three out of the five lenses in this video, as well as the Canon EF to R adapter with the built-in ND. If you're interested in checking any of those videos out, please click on one of the links here. Thanks for watching today's video, I really do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one.